You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. All right, welcome to episode 116 of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. This is the real estate segment, and today I get to have a conversation with a a frequent, you've not been a frequent, but in the very beginning when we started, we had you on the podcast a couple times, Steve Kitnick, so it's been a while, so I'm happy to have you back on. I wanted to do a little conversation with Steve Diamond, Diamond in the Desert, actually. Maybe we should talk a little bit about that in a second, Steve, uh, because Steve has a very interesting background where he did radio and things before, and I'm very happy to say he's an early adapter to understanding how to use live stream and Zoom, and we'll get him to talk about that as well. Steve and I have known each other for, good Lord, 20, at least 20, 20 years. years. Uh, we met uh, November of 1999 when I first... Wow. I, I came to Las Vegas uh, July 1st, uh, 1999, having been a real estate broker, which I still am, in California from uh, 1986, uh, April. This is my anniversary month, uh, 34, wow. 34 wow. years. Wonderful. And I uh, came here in 99 and uh, signed on with you uh, with Prudential Americana at the time. So it was so here, November 99. So here we go, and we've followed each other through the years. And yes, our relationship what? has lasted uh, longer than any of my marriages. <laughs> okay, very good. I'd love to know that. And honestly, Steve, we have seen, so let's jump into talking about, I know you, like me, had uh, a bit of a flashback to the short sale market when all this started happening, because you and I talked about it, and I'm like, hmm, and I'm feeling, Steve, we have to dust that off, because there's, I believe with in Vegas, I don't know if it'll be everywhere, you know, we have a, a different situation. This is not a housing crisis that we're in, right? However, comma. If we continue with people not having jobs and they have not as much equity, not everybody has the same amount of equity. We have a lot of people who purchase homes and once everything recovered and they're in good equity position, but not the people who bought a house a couple last couple of years, right? If the market shifts and goes down and people are out of work and they get behind in their payments, we could get ourselves back into maybe not a 75% uh, of the businesses distressed properties, but it could be 20, 25%. What are your thoughts on that? It- well, it could certainly, it's certainly possible, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we, we don't really know, <laughs> you know, That's we, the problem. we, we don't we'd know, be right? in a different business, but uh, I think we have to prepare for it. I, I'm not an economist, uh, uh, you know, my background is in other areas, but my gut instinct says that if we did have uh, a, a real major housing issue, uh, the next bailout is going to help the homeowners uh, and not the banks as they did in the past. So I think it might be a totally different bailout with a lot of forbearances, uh, which are already starting, uh, deferred payments, which is putting money on the back end of loans. Mm-hmm. So I think I want to be prepared, uh, just as I w- became prepared for doing live stream uh, video conferencing, continuing education classes. Right. I, I had a feeling that it would probably be coming. I wasn't going to wait for the real estate division to approve it. I wanted to be ready to go. And uh, you helped me with that. And uh, we're doing it. I And I beat everybody to the market by a minimum of two weeks. So and, I got to be ready. And so we, we will be ready. And you and I will join forces as we always do to take a look at that. Because I think you are 100% right on uh, this time around, if, if homeowners start getting into that distressed place, things hopefully will look different and we'll be looking out. So, But the real estate agent could still have a major role in that. Because remember, when we did this, Steve and I created a course called uh, CFAC, sort of, right? Sir, well, we had two of them. Uh, the first one we launched in uh, May of 2009, uh, although we were training even before that. That was... Uh, the certified short sale professional where we got licensed uh, to turn uh, an already existing online course into a Nevadaized uh, version and continuing education. And then later uh, the certified foreclosure alternative consultant. Uh, and so, yeah, we trained a lot of people uh, in this town. To- and that approach of why we called it foreclosure alternatives is what's sticking in my mind, Steve, that to your point about forbearances and maybe loan mods and things like that, we're just going to have to stay up on it, right? The, the point for everybody listening would be pay attention to what's happening 
what banks are doing, what the government might be doing if people start getting into, if, if the uh, unemployment issue continues on and people don't all give, be able to get back to work. Because let's face it, uh, companies are going to use this as an opportunity to restructure and get profitable again. So are they going to bring everybody back? Who knows? These are all the things I'm thinking about every every week and day to, to kind of say, how do we stay a little bit of ahead, ahead of what's happening and be ready to adapt and adjust to the market. So we have to be that, that consultant that goes out and says, let me help you. Let me get you in the right direction. Let me be the source of the source so that if later they need to sell their house, we're here for you. That was the approach that we put together in yeah. our in our course, right? Yes, and I think that uh, there's a couple of aspects of our course that are very applicable right now. <laughs> and that is, uh, for example, uh, homeowners are very uh, we're anxious and uncertain. I think we might uh, real estate agents could uh, reach out to their existing clients to uh, see how they're doing, mm -hmm. uh, make a contact and uh, might even apply, uh, you know, that Kuvla Ross model of the five stages of grief uh, Absolutely. Uh, you know, with regards to uh, there's probably a lot of angry people out there. Absolutely. And, uh, maybe some people are going into uh, uh, some form of depression. Uh, you know, we're not therapists, but, we, you know, our our approach and what I was always proud of and remain proud of uh, that we are we're consultants and, uh, you know, we're empathetic. Uh, we're more than just, uh, you know, selling widgets out there. This mm -hmm. is important stuff. And and so I think we it, it's an opportunity to reach out, uh, make mm -hmm. phone calls, Zoom, whatever they want to do and reach out to people and see how they're doing in it. You know, because I think when you help people in times of distress, uh, mm -hmm. they they really uh, feel really good about what you're doing for them, uh, more so than maybe just in regular normal circumstances. So, uh, I think everybody should be uh, contacting their uh, their clients. Absolutely, and just do a check in. I mean, honestly, not about business, because inevitably, when you have, we actually wrote a script, Steve, to for our folks that. Uh, uh, if they get, if I was to call you, you're on my list and I'm like, Hey Steve, it's Jan. It's been a while. I haven't had a chance to check in. How are you doing during all this? How's the family? And we're going to get into a dialogue, right? Inevitably, major uh, many, many times Steve knows I'm in the business. I sold him his house. He's going to get around to Jan. How's your business? How's the market? What's happening with the real estate market? It gives you an opportunity to have a conversation about that, but not to start with that. Right. Right. So, and then, but just checking in with people is, is, is critical. People appreciate it because here's the deal. They're home. Yeah. They're home. Yeah. You know, you have a captive audience. I mean, they are home. Uh, you know, it's, it's And they're answering their phone. So don't do it in an email. I mean, you can oh, follow no. up with, any, with a newsletter about what's happening in the market, but you need to call people and check in. Yeah, with them. Just, not, just, not just a text either. This is a time for a real phone call. Or yeah. let's do a Zoom. Let's get together or, or schedule a little uh, client happy hour or a, Let's just get together and I'll, and we'll all check in if, if it's people that you hang out with, right? This is what we're doing. How, how many of those kind of things have you been on since this has all started? Have you been into any kind of, I know you've been hosting things, but have you joined any other well, people I want did, to get I together? Did, I did join one of your, uh, co you know, uh, cocktail yeah. parties or uh, happy hours. Uh, I With some friends, we've done that. I, I'm going to launch one too. I, I do want to have a... Uh, a Good. cocktail party but yeah i mean that's uh i think that's what uh, people ought to be doing uh, there's a lot of lonely people depressed and nobody mm -hmm. to reach out to and uh you know you stay that's home uh, you know uh it's kind of uh, kind of rough i i'm I, i'm i'm fortunate i you know i like where we live i like you know i'm a homebody anyways marilyn right. and i spend a lot of time at home so uh i haven't turned into jack torrance <laughs> uh, from The Shining, you know, uh, yet, just yet uh, played by Jack Nicholson. You know, the other uh, the other uh, thing about our uh, where our uh, previous course has applicability besides that five stages of grief of uh, Elizabeth Kubler Ross, but also the idea about he or she who embraces change, mm -hmm. has a competitive advantage over uh, their competition. So, totally. uh, you know, you know, if you're afraid of change, uh, you need to overcome that. Uh, the sooner you embrace it, like, for example, look, uh, this Zoom thing or Facebook, this audio, you know, this is this is new to me. Uh, 
I, I had to uh, embrace it. I'm not afraid of it. Uh, I, I, I almost wallow in the unknown and uncertainty. I kind of, I kind of like it. And, uh, you know, I've, I've had, I've got partners like yourself and others who've helped me. So, if, you know, if you reach out for help, there, there are you go. To, uh, to do it. Uh, Let, let's talk a little bit about that. So, cause I do recall that you saw it coming and this is something I love about you, Steve, that even when I think about how you were forward thinking, not only on the whole short sale piece, because frankly, I ended up leaving one of the companies I was at because of that short sell crisis and realizing there was such a need for training that, and you were so far ahead of it that we joined forces. Um, the other thing that comes to mind before we talk about how you switch to live streaming is seeing the value of the golden nights in Vegas. I'm never going to get over sitting in a coffee no. shop with you and you no. saying, oh, you're wearing it. That's what made me think I of it. I'm wearing my, uh, yeah, I'm, yep. I'm, I'm wearing and my. Like, yeah. Yeah. I really think, let me tell you the reasons why you need to get involved with me this. And I was stupidly did not get involved with him, but he still helped me out. And I was able to get in on some of the early, he was an early, you know, uh, what do you call it? A uh, um, season ticket holder, season early, ticket adopter, adopter, whatever. Early, early adopter before anybody even knew how good the nights were going to be. And you saw it and, and we've had fun with that. And here well, we I are in this thing, but go ahead. Yeah. Well, I trusted my uh, instincts about there that. You go. See, um, you know, and I'm always telling uh, Marilyn, my wife, I'm always telling her uh, she's very bright, although I must question her taste in men, of course. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, in any event, uh, I'm always telling her, you know, when she's got an idea, uh, trust your instincts. You know, uh, by the way, I don't How believe. What's she doing, by the way? She's a she's nurse. Going, she's working at the, the hospital. And um, uh, she's, how's she handling it? Is she doing well, it's very or? stressful. It, it, look, it, even aside from the COVID scenario, uh, it's very stressful work. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, the nurses uh, run the hospital. They're overworked, most of them. Uh, mo uh, not going to mention any hospitals or, or uh, health organizations, but many of them are profit motive. And uh, they, you know, they just look at the bottom line and they're, mm -hmm. they're churning and burning. And uh, it's a tough, uh, it's a tough job. They're, they're, they're heroes, uh, you know, and I know Absolutely. it kind of sounds cliche, but it happens to be uh, true. So she's working very hard and mm -hmm. it is problematic. She's, she doesn't work in the area, direct area. Uh, okay. But, uh, you know, it's all, it could be all over the place. And, uh, exactly. Well, you uh, let her know. We're thinking of her and we do appreciate her and all of her other, you know, uh, medical professionals because they are the true heroes. It's crazy. It's the, the, some of the conditions in some parts of the country. Let's hope that that doesn't happen here for us. You know? Yeah. If you wanted to get back to the Golden Knights at all, the whole point was, see, I, look, I, I, this is a major league town and, and we mm -hmm. have a big enough population and they all saw that. Uh, to be able to draw from. But what uh, the people who decided to do it and what some of us believed in was that not only uh, could our population base support a major league team, you know, two million plus, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but also being an a international uh, destination point. So people mm -hmm. would uh, come here uh, and uh, schedule their vacations and conferences or whatever they're doing. Hey, hey, uh, you know, the Penguins are going to be in town. Let's uh, let's go. So and the other thing I had, I was up in Sacramento for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And when the Sacramento Kings, the basketball team came to uh, it, just took over the city. Now, of course, this is we're in the entertainment capital of the world. Sure. Sacramento, the the entertainment capital of Sacramento was the was the state assembly. Uh, you know, <laughs> particularly when Willie Brown was there, you know, really great guy. So I, I knew it would be uh, big, I, but I didn't know. Yeah, anything. Saw that. I, I didn't know. But, yeah, I did. Yeah. So I kind of figured the same kind of a thing. But I, I'm a sports person. Yeah, I followed sports. You are. But I didn't know anything about hockey. I took me half the season or season and a half to figure out what offsides was and icing and yep. you know check poke uh, what do i know but i was we, learning. All, became, we all became experts at uh, the blue line and what's offsides yeah. and all that. but uh yeah. I, I don't mind not knowing things and it ties into what's going on now in real estate and everything i'm not afraid of change you know i got my as you know i got my degree uh, undergraduate degree in philosophy mm -hmm. and one of the philosophers that we actually incorporated yeah. into our uh, uh, CFAC was uh, Heraclitus 
and a pre-Socratic philosopher. And one of the things that uh, he had stated and most known for, him, uh, for is uh, that the only constant is change. Right. So, you know, you'd be running counter, if you embrace that, you're running counter to nature and in the way of things to, uh, to be resistant to it. It's just a fact of uh, 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 life. Like, you know, what, Benjamin Franklin, the only certainty is death and taxes? Well, the only certainty is change. It's change. So I accept it. Uh, well, and let's let's talk about how you did adapt and, and kind of finish our, our talk today on what you did and what you're doing now. And I want to get your impact as far as how you're doing your CEs here. Plus, I think you I don't know if you have the ability to do it in other states because we have listeners from other states. But definitely. And if you're a Nevada licensee, you can take advantage of Steve's CE live streams right now. And I also want you to get to talk about what you think is going to happen, if it will continue or we'll go back to have to do it live. So first of all. What did you do and how, do, how can people get to get into your live streams right now for CE if they need continuing ed? All right. So with respect to uh, Nevada uh, real estate continuing education, they just go to my website, NevadaCE.com, mm -hmm. NevadaCE.com. And I have um, on, see, I'm, I'm making a distinction. Uh, people call online classes, live stream uh, video conferencing uh, is not, it's not online. Online courses is, is a form of distance learning. So in other words, online courses, which I have, and I have a package uh, through my affiliate with online ed, and um, it's just you and the computer and you go at right. your own pace and you take quizzes. Everybody passes, so don't freak out. Mm -hmm. And then you take a test. And everybody passes, okay, mm -hmm. eventually, because mm -hmm. you can just keep taking it. So that's mm -hmm. online is distance. Now, what I'm doing now is live stream video conferencing. You want to call it webinar? Yeah, it's what we're doing right now. Digital uh, on uh, March 27th, the real estate division uh, decided that live stream like this, digital technology would be considered a form of live instruction because in, in Nevada, uh, if so let's say uh, a subsequent renewal is usually 24 hours with certain mandated topics. Uh, years ago, you could take it all online, you know, distance, correspondence, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, they decided, no, we want people to go at least half live. So it's half and half. So as long as I can see you, you can see me, and you're in the classroom, although we take breaks and you're still allowed to be absent a little bit, percentage. Uh, this is considered live instruction. And, uh, uh, you know, it's going well. We'll be doing a class together later today. Uh, mm -hmm. You and I, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, wh whether or not it'll continue or not, uh, mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I think it's going to be tough uh, to go back. You know, once you open up the door. Now, some people think that this was just a temporary measure. There's nothing in the uh, statement that the division made. If you go to red.nv.gov and look at their March 27th uh, uh, statement, uh, it, is, it is temporary in the context of the governor's uh, uh, directive. directive. Uh, however, it doesn't, uh, there's no mention with, from the real estate division that what we're doing is temporary. It's just mm -hmm. happening in conjunction with that. And as much as I love being in, uh, in a live classroom, um, I'm hoping that this does remain. Uh, this is the present, this is the future. Mm -hmm. And there'll, there'll, there'll still be people who will want to be in a live classroom. And so if this does change. You'll do both maybe? Well, occasionally. What I'll do is I'll do uh, a, a live classes and live streaming live simultaneously. Mm -hmm. In other words, those in the classroom are in the live studio audience and you're right. at home or wherever you are. That's actually cool. And you know what, so do you think also that if that's the case, the real estate division would have to work because it is, it is they would have to work with the legislature to change, to modify the code, to, to amend the code. To, do you feel like that's required to define what live means? Because that's really what we're talking about. Well, definition of live, right? Yeah. Well, you know, there's uh, interesting. 
I was kind of talking uh, to the uh, deputy uh, administrator, Perry Fagan, before mm -hmm. this uh, came uh, down. And, uh, you know, look, they ch they changed it without an emergency regulation. That's true. They, they uh, otherwise, see, because I asked them about that. I said, look, it can't we have an, um, an emergency regulation? But of course, they're too busy. They're yeah. doing a lot of other things. That takes time. Uh, you could do it by regulatory change. Uh, I, I'm uncertain. I'd have to research it myself to see whether the administrator um, under some vague language in the uh, statute or regulation has the authority to do things that some people would argue uh, circumvent regulation or statute. Yeah. But you know, the way I feel is that uh, this, uh, this COVID virus scenario is going to go on for a while. I think it gives them time if they want to go that route. Good point. Uh, they could certainly uh, get a, a workshop going for regulation and then redefine it. But uh, right. there's no exactly. going back. I think you're right. It's going to be exciting. And I like it. I'm embracing it. You know me. I embrace change. So do you. We we put that as the very beginning of our course. And we will do it again if we have to. Not if. When we have to bring a modified version of that out. It's going to be he, who, he or she who adapts first and easily uh, thrives. And it's the truth. Uh, if you if you wait and you stay in the sidelines, frankly, I feel like there's going to be a people that are, if this goes on and it will for a while, then it's going to impact our market. It already is. It's going to drive people out of the real estate business, which then is good for the people who stay. There's less competition. Uh, I see, I, I project that that's going to happen, Steve. That it's not going to be as bad as it was in the, the last go around, in my opinion. However, comma, it, if it goes on with 50%, because right now for the last three or four weeks, we are experiencing 50% less under contracts. Steady listings, consistent new listings, but less buyers, which of course is going to set up things. If it continues, it'll set up a, a dynamic of, of maybe there's a whole bunch of people waiting on the sidelines. But see, this is the point. Nobody knows. You know when you're in the middle of it, right? So you just have to be ready for anything. Exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. It, it, real estate in the long term is always a very good investment. We don't know. Uh, there are people, but you know, when investors, uh, uh, when when they leave the market, uh, they're not willing to take the risk uh, either. Mm -hmm. So uh, they'll be back, though. They so, will oh be yeah, back. everybody they're will waiting. be back, and you can mm -hmm. never, whether it's the uh, stock market or uh, treasury bill, you know, uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, real estate, you never know when a bottom is, but uh, real until you're through it. Until yeah. you're on the other side of it, right? Real estate is, uh, to me, is not as big as a risk as the volatility of a stock market. Uh, Hundred percent agree, and I think there's a lot of people thinking about maybe they should diversify. So lots of reasons. Okay, so if you need to get updated into your CE classes and get ahead of that and experience the CE from the beauty and comfort of your own home, you got to go to NevadaCE.com. We're going to put in the show notes episode 116 over at WBNL Podcast all of Steve's info. Uh, he's got great content on his website. He's putting up blog posts. Uh, his and you can get into all of his classes, and they're selling out. So you want to be able to get ahead and get in there. And honestly, I'm I'm looking forward to doing some classes with you, Steve. And and we'll I, I believe you. We're going to continue on. So any last thoughts? Thank you for yeah, being I, here today. I, if I might uh, make one more plug for myself, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. I want people to know when they go to my site, they can see that I also do oh, yeah. started to do expert witness work uh, in lawsuits. So uh, if they or their broker or their attorneys need somebody, uh, uh, they could consider uh, calling me. I, I've worked on the defense side. I've worked on the plaintiff side uh, either way. But I particularly like the plaintiff side when real estate brokers or agents and others have scammed the public. So uh, either way, you know, if I believe in the case, I'm happy to work on it. Strong endorsement from me on that for sure. Steve is great at that. In fact, I call Steve when I have questions and he has helped a ton of agents and brokers with that very, very uh, skill set. And so, yeah, definitely go to Nevada CE to see all the things that he does to help you and come join a class soon and uh, have have some entertainment while you also get the necessary education for your renewal of your seat of your uh, real estate license definitely Thanks for having me all yeah. right have a have a great day and see you soon steve see you in a Take zoom care. soon bye-bye everybody bye-bye 
You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube.